Real Talk Pod Zone. Rent is skyrocketing in Sacramento ever since June 2015. It's been up, up, up. Someday. It is going to be 108 degrees today, 107 at the lowest. Boy, I ain't had that record since 1920, and that was as of August 15th, 2019 now. Well, rising rent in Sacramento, I can tell you it's been rising and rising and rising and rising. And I got a bunch of clips right here right now of people protesting. There was a protest two days ago, and... um, People complaining and talking about the rent scams and all this and that. And I can give you first hand of that. So let's go ahead and hop right into the action. Now to this. Tonight, Sacramento senior citizens on fixed incomes struggling to keep a roof over their heads. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Janes. I'm Adrienne Moore. And now they're pleading with their apartment managers to stop another rent increase before they end up homeless. CBS 13's Lamore Abrams is live in Curtis Park where residents are being priced out. Lamore. Adrian, Christina, this story really starts right over here with a boom in the local real estate market. As more and more new developments like this pop up around town, rents are going up just about everywhere else, including right over here, just across the street, where senior citizens living here say their rents are going up so fast, they're worried they may end up on the streets. At 74, finding a comfortable and safe place to live is all she asked for. Look at my little coffee corner here. But Mary Wiley is one of dozens of low-income tenants at Curtis Park Court fighting to stay. We're talking about the first subject is rent increases. Mm -hmm. The issue of rising rents so critical for those on fixed incomes that state housing advocates ordered a meeting. Apartment managers, city housing officials, legal representatives, and the council member representing this... And that's what was going on a couple of days ago. See, this has been going on for a year now. And they've been having meetings. And still nothing's going on. It's kind of like, you know, a lot, but a lot of people do take their anger out on the managers. It's not the manager's fault. I'll tell you what is the manager's fault. It's not the manager's fault for raised rent. That's the company's fault. So you need to go and protest. I actually have a clip of you of protesters that went to the owner's house and it was a nice rich area and it just stood out there i think there was like 30 to 35 deep outside holding signs and protesting at the owner's house (laughs) so i'll let's let's get into it right now before we talk about other rent increases saturday august 3rd 11 p.m this is uh kate cop watches uh protest for rent control San Diego Tenants Union. Uh, we've got uh, High Desert Coachella Valley Cop Watch in presence, showing their uh, showing their love and dedication to the uh, activism movement. There's Kate Cop Watch right there. These are the people who showed up in protest of this uh, slumlord scumbag. That's High Desert. What's uh, what's Mike's last name? Contreras. Gutierrez? He's Hispanic? Contreras. Oh, Contreras. Michael Contreras, right here, 954 La Jolla Farms Road. Well, hey, you heard, uh, I didn't say his address, uh, that guy did. <laughs> uh, and I can't stop the show right now, so hey, got to go on there. Sorry about that, but hey, I mean, that's what they need. They need people to go up there because it is just getting so ridiculous, so harsh. I mean, like at elderly becoming um, homeless. It's like before you came homeless just off of drugs or not finding a place uh, because you have bad credit. I mean, not bad credit. You have evictions. Now they go into your credit. So you got to have at least decent credit. I mean, 
I had moved to Stockton in June 2015. I moved back to Sacramento August 2015. And in those period of two months, a lot of apartments that I had already uh, wanted to get and or lived in, it went up 100 to 150 dollars. Some even 200. So that's 500 to 700 bucks. I don't know. You guys can do the math. It was just, and then I was, you know, I just thought I was going to get an apartment like that. So I wasn't worried about it. So I actually came back, uh, put my stuff in the storage and I just, uh, pitched a tent somewhere where I've been looking at a nice area that was hidden. And, you know, all of a sudden that just came into three years, just about on and off outside in my car, um, sleeping at my baby mom's house, um, God mom's house. I mean, it was hectic and I had diabetes, so I was, you know, I was using warm insulin and not eating right and eating all sugary food here and there. It was terrible. I was like, when I finally got into a place where I was waiting to get another place, I was just on bed rest almost for a uh, half a year, just sick and stuff, going in and out the hospital. And it just, you know, rent increases, making homeless. They wanted you to make three times rent. How can someone say someone either that's on a some type of aid from the government or have a basic job where you just get minimum wage or one or two dollars more minimum wage and you're working you have to work 40 hours a week but you don't really get 40 hours a week so you get 30 to 35 and you're struggling to pay rent and they want you to make three times the rent so basically you got to lie on paper i mean i always you know talk to managers they say you got to fabricate this or this and that and they say you're not supposed to but you know everyone's going to try to lie to get that place so you make up uh, different uh, you know incomes and all that and it's just you know ridiculous you don't have to go through that especially for people that are on low income, you know, they don't need to raise the rent, especially when all they do is uh, clean the carpets and, and paint over dirty walls. And, you know, they have roaches and rats in apartments and fleas and bed bugs. And they just don't, you know, I've, I came back and I seen the same little area on this deck. It was uh, about to collapse and it was just staying there for a long time. And they're raising rent, you know, in these one apartments and, and you know, other apartments, uh, it's hot in Sacramento. People need a pool so they can't afford They don't want to spend the money. It's not they can't afford it. They don't want to spend the money on cleaning the pool. So they clog the pool up with cement and make something else and raise rent. Then you have the managers where it is their fault, where they're just wanting their own people to come in. So if they're one race, they want their own race there. There's a lot of apartments where it's just full of people as one race. And I see a lot of that. And it's really unfair to other people that's been here, born in um, this country, and they're looking for a place and they can't get a place to because they want to charge other people some other little uh, relocation package scam. I don't know, but I just see a lot of people like, how did you just get to this uh, country and you take you um, you getting all this money on food stamps and paying all this a thousand dollar rent and this and that? And it's like you know, people are raising rent. It's ridiculous to some apartments in the urban area. And you know, it's not saying that other people don't need a place. It's we need to take care of our population first with housing because we have too much homeless and all that. And they would try to uh, raise the criteria of the manager. I, I went to get this one apartment and this one manager was just looking at me all weird and stuff. Maybe it was too many problems there. Or she was just looking at me like weird from the beginning and trying to make sure I didn't get her like, oh, you didn't, uh, you didn't sign, you know, you need this and that or whoop de whoop and, or you need uh, double income rent or you, you know what I'm saying? Some of them was, for the first time ever were saying it was because my credit wasn't the best. And I was like, well, what did, you know, credit should have to do with you getting a house. Your housing credit should be separate. And it shows, I, you know, I have no evictions, no complaints from managers, no, uh, I'm not a loud person, no big parties, I'm not a neighbor hazard, so, you know, but it was just going up and up. And uh, California is, is facing this deficit right now. Let's see what this uh, person has to say. Great weather, great beaches, great opportunities. There's lots to come to California for. But not affordable housing. In fact, California is in the midst of what's been described as an affordable housing crisis. The median price of a home here, double the national cost. If you're looking to buy a place in California, don't expect much change from half a million dollars. In fact, to find affordability, you'll find yourself commuting a lot. It takes Live from KTV in Reno, you're watching two news at 6 30. the day i got the email with the new rent i knew that i wasn't going to be able to afford that east of midtown rent prices continue to rise all across the truckee meadows and one woman says that she has to move because her new rate is too high and that is tonight's two news big story at 6 30. brooke noble has lived in her one bedroom apartment in midtown for about four years now I'm Landon Miller. And I'm Kristen Remington. Noble's rent went up more than $300. For her, that's an increase of more than... 
Wow. So that lady got hit $300. Okay. Let's see what their excuses are. I mean, there's no excuses. There shouldn't be no excuses. There's a lot of other states that are sending their homeless people here one-way tickets and clogging up. Sacramento's getting dirtier and dirtier and dirtier. Downtown is just all looking like Skid Row now in Sacramento, and there's nothing but bars around. Uh, they're barely just opening up a Taco Bell because there's a bunch of other restaurants that people can't afford. And they're trying to, so what's going on is because the King's Arena got saved. Now the rent has to go up. I mean, that doesn't make sense. They've spent $11 million on that ugly little statue outside the King's Arena downtown. If you go look at that Pikachu looking statue, they spent a mil, $11 million on that. And let's just cut it down to $8 million if they're exaggerating, but it was on the news. And uh, that's a lot of money when you could have been saving Sacramento. There's no new ocean scenery. Sacramento didn't get beautiful. I could see if you pay in the Bay Area a little more for the views and the ocean and the cool weather, but out here it's hot and stuffy and stinky. Let's see what their excuse is. With heavy machinery now in place, the 11-story mixed-use development known as 19J moves closer to groundbreaking. The reason behind this project was really to you know, find a way to do something that is more affordable for the workforce, that they can afford in the right location. The complex caters to a younger millennial workforce, anchored by micro units, the majority of which are around 400 square feet. Homo. Whoa, 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 lady, I'm cutting you off right there because you do not make sense. Affordable for the working force, get out of here. So $1,000 and $2,000, $3,000 for a one bedroom is uh, affordable for people? Uh, I don't think so, lady. You know, there's a whole bunch of new buildings that are built in the Alkaline Flat neighborhood, uh, right by uh, downtown Sacramento. And this neighborhood is just full of high rises and new buildings are building, but they're all, you know, the, there's this mobile hills, uh, I mean, this old factory or something, and they made lofts out of it. And I called a lady. She was like, the rent was two thousand, like some three hundred or something for a one bedroom. I'm like, no way. And this is in the ugliest neighborhood and the poorest neighborhood in Sacramento. I mean, where are these people moving? I'm supposed to go to parks. They can't go to normal parks around the Alkaline Flat neighborhood because there's too many homeless people around that are sleeping that need places to sleep. And then there's the drug addicts that are shooting up heroin and acting all weird and yelling and screaming. So you have why you raise rent in that type of neighborhood? It's just, you know this. A cool thing to do, but you know, you're all money hungry though. You're all pulling scams on people. It's just ridiculous. They don't have no good neighborhood stores to go to because you can't walk. You have to worry about getting robbed or bugged or harassed uh, or even getting an affection from stepping on something, you know. So, it, well, how is rent raising? I mean, like I said, it didn't get more nicer looking in Sacramento, and there's no reason to raise a rent, but. There's been a lot of protests, and you want to stand with us? I go downtown and go to one of the meetings. You know, protest, protest, protest. I hope they're starting to uh, come through and put caps on rents now for certain people and certain criteria is going to be going down. So a lot of these um, co management companies are going to um, they're gonna face it. Do not go with this one management company called Pama Management, P-A-M-A -A Management. I lived over there in Fairfield, 2681 Fairfield, the Rose Garden Apartments, and it was they were just kicking everyone out, and the lady was just trying to move her own kind in there and she was moving everyone else out. So all the loud drama stuff got blamed on all the minority type kids or the kids that college looking kids or some uh, younger looking generation. All of a sudden they raised rent there, but you know, when it was time for me to move out, I left my apartment like I always do in perfect condition. It took me almost, uh, it took more than half a year to get my money back. Cause at first I was just saying, man, they're taking too long. I was waiting three months and then I started calling them and, and the manager, I was like, where is my uh, deposit back? And I was supposed to get 650 back. And I was, you know, it got to the point where I had to call them and literally threaten them and say, you know what, I'm in L.A. right now and I'm coming to get it, Rupty Whoop. And I just went off on them. And then finally the dude uh, said he sent out a check. And what do you know, four days later, I got a check. Four days after I had to threaten them, I got my check, though. And, of course, they took off $100 or something for uh, cleaning the carpets. But I cleaned the carpets perfectly before I left. That's another thing. I mean, if, you're clean, if your carpets are clean, you shouldn't have to sit there and clean every single carpet. You should be able to do a test. Okay, you got the carpets clean. Show the receipt to the manager. Bam. And you don't get charged for that. That's one thing managers I started thought hate about me is that I always get my deposit back. And some managers I got so desperate, I was like, you can keep half of it. I just you need it now to move or something. Or some apartment was so dirty and stocked and I moved out. I was like, you know, you can keep the deposit. I just want to get out of here. Um, and he let me break my lease and even gave me uh, more than half my deposit back. But, hey, you know, sorry rent's going up on you guys. Uh, we need to stick together on um, subjects like this, you know. It's really important. Everyone deserves a home. No one asks to be born. We don't deserve to be cold and homeless or skyrocket rent. 
working our tails off just to live. I don't think so. 